I would like to introduce you to somebody I've had the privilege of knowing for many, many years now. I've seen this gentleman grow into becoming an amazing stylist. He's killing it right now on the fashion circuit, uh, working on some of the biggest shows and editorial work. Welcome to the show, Declan Shields. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, Very good. It's really good to be back in my hometown of Dublin. Yeah. What's it like to be back home? I mean, you come it's back It's great. I don't anyway. get back enough. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, very good. You've been in London for many years now, haven't you? I've been in London for 15 years. I know. As, as you haven't aged a bit. Thank honestly, you. <laughs> since the last thing you... It also feels like I've been there for about five years. Yeah, yeah it's gone it's, so quick. Yeah, so yeah. obviously you're enjoying it anyway. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Look, you are absolutely, I mean, does, for those of you that don't know Declan, um, follow him on social media. He is absolutely killing it right now. Um, he's working on some of the biggest shows um, and editorial work and working with some of the biggest stylists. And now you're heading up your own teams, aren't you? That's correct, yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your background and your journey, how you got to becoming one of the leading stylists? Okay, so how I got into hairdressing, I was actually in art school studying graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked as a Saturday boy in a salon. Mm. Um, I used to go in and shampoo hair. What salon was that? It was actually in Donegal, of all places, yeah. It was? And um, it was a Patrick Gilday salon. Patrick Gilday, yeah. yeah. Patrick, very well. Do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when I finished uni, I, I moved back to Dublin and I started working at Tony and Guy. I worked for Essentials with Nikki Condy yeah. on yeah. South Ann Street. Um, and I started uh, training there, essentially. That's um, where we first met, I think, you know? Yeah, yeah. You were working there. Yeah. Um, so I spent a year working there as an assistant in the salon. Um, obviously, training as well and then I decided to move to London. I had a couple of friends that were moving to London around the same time and we'd all finish uni and yeah we decided to make the move. Very good. So I essentially transferred um, to Tony and Guy in Covent Garden mm -hmm. and then I carried on my training there. Okay. Listen, did you move over with other hairdressers or were these were no, friends in other, uh, in other careers, were they? One was a musician and one was in IT. Okay. Yeah. And did you go and all live to, together in the same place? We kind of, when we arrived in London, we kind of scattered to different places, um, which we, you know, we're all still living there now, but in different areas of London. Okay. Mm. Um, tell me a little bit about the Tony and Guy back then. So you went over there as an assistant, or were you uh, qualified yeah. at that stage? No, I wasn't qualified. Um, okay. So I carried on my training, and um, I was a little bit older starting hair, hairdressing, so I was 21 when I started, so I was quite eager to get through my training and, and barter and qualify. So I decided to be um, a colour technician. Okay. So I went to St. Christopher's Place and I vartered in colour first. Now luckily I worked for Essentials, which gave you the opportunity to do both cut and colour. Yeah, because that was a new generation for them, really. Yeah, so absolutely, in, yeah. incorporated that in, in, mm. into it. And I feel like if you're going to be a, you know, a hairstylist, I personally wanted to be an all-rounder. All-rounder. Yeah. Um, so I worked as a colour technician in the salon for about a year, and in that time as well I was also training to be a cutter. Um, so about a year later I went back and I did my cutting vartering okay. um, at the New York Street Academy. Okay, very good, very yeah. good indeed. Um, you worked as a stylist there for some time, but you became an art director as well, didn't you? Yeah. Is that something um, that you really wanted to get involved with? And what inspired you to want to do that? Well, I started training the assistants in the salon um, and training them in MVQ. And I found it, was, it wasn't, wasn't something I really wanted to get into, but I found I really enjoyed it. And sharing your skill set with, um, with young kids yeah, yeah. Um, was very satisfying. So I decided to do some teacher training. And then I was shadowing, shadowing the Tony Guy art team at the New York Fishery Academy. Um, and then I began teaching there. So I was teaching on the colour side. I was teaching colour vartering and also some MVQ. Okay, very good. Mm. Um, look, the, the artistic team, because you need to do a, a presentation as well, don't you, at the end of to become an art, di art director. That's right. Is yeah. that something that you did? You yeah, know? yeah. So I was. That's it. I mean, I, I, I did the same thing myself. Mm -hmm. and it's quite a challenging thing, isn't it? It's not for everybody. I understand that. But to go into that, you have to immerse yourself into it, don't you? And yeah. it becomes, you know, becomes your life, doesn't it? Um, and then do the presentation in front of all the other art directors. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a nerd when it comes to research and I've always been into doing projects and researching fashion and trends and beauty. And um, look, I worked with, luckily I worked under AJ Blackadder and Jason Gray. Um, and they were great mentors for me. Um, 
so yeah, I, I was attending our team training um, and I decided I would go to become an art director for Tony and Guy. So um, I worked up to, until, yeah, I did an, uh, a presentation, I think about 20 models. So that's a massive achievement. It, yeah, it was pretty yourself, full on, and it? you know, Sasha was there, Tony was there, I think. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty, pretty big. Yeah, pretty big. So after that, you have um, you've gone into the session world. So I mean, yeah. that's a big, big change from being a color technician. I yeah. know you did cutting then on the, on that side. So you wanted to become uh, a session hairdresser. You really challenged yourself in your career. Yeah, I get bored very easily. <laughs> I like to I like to move fast. Because yeah, um, so. they're all different segments. <laughs> yeah, all completely different segments. I feel like personally, when I achieve something, I always feel like you know, What's there's, the next there's, there's a next challenge. Yeah. I think um, what motivates us is progression yeah, that way. I, I, agree. I think if you progress to a certain level, you get bored, then you've got to progress to do, do something else. And obviously that's what mm -hmm. you've gone and done. Um, tell us a little bit about how did you get into that? Did somebody inspire you to go and do that? Yeah, so obviously at Tony and Guy, they sponsor London Fashion Week. So I did a little bit of um, assisting with them mm -hmm. at London. And then I decided this is what I want, want to do. I want to you know, leave and be freelance and be self-employed and do session work. So um, I started assisting Malcolm Edwards, okay. um, who's Amazing, yeah, yeah. one of the, the, the big guns in London, um, but also different people. You know, I was working part-time in the salon, um, and it's, it's difficult because you have to be available to assist, totally. but also you have to earn money, you know? So I think a, a good way of doing it is becoming like part-time and then you know, you're available some days. So that's what I did. So I started working with Malcolm. I was working with James Pesius as well. Um, other artists like Neil Moody, James Rowe, um, kind of just doing the circuits and assisting Were everyone. You with an agency at this stage? No, I wasn't. I was working through, um, because I was assisting, I was just working through whatever agency the artists were, um, were with, were represented by. Okay. Um, and then I did that for a few years, just working on different teams. Mm -hmm. Um, I would go to Paris for the shows and again just work, you know, do as many shows as I could do in that week. Mm -hmm. I would take a week off from the salon and just go. Um, just and so people are clear on this, <coughs> you have to put yourself there, don't you? you have, initially you have to take yourself there, yeah. yeah you I mean, it, the great thing about London is it's so easy to get to Paris. So, you know, you yeah. just hop on a train, it's like getting a tube. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's quite convenient in that sense. So, and I was lucky to have some friends in Paris, so I used to like just crash on floors and, yeah. you know, and I'd just spend the week there and just, you know, These I didn't know. These are stories I love to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? This, this is it, you know what I mean? Because pe people don't, you know, I, I think just to give a, uh, you know, an overview, people have to give up their own free time get there, Absolutely. be available, yeah. days off, or it's, there's no days off type of thing, you have to put yourself there and be immerse yourself in that, don't it, you? It's funny because it, it sounds really glamorous and it looks really glamorous on Instagram, but mm. a lot of it is, you know, quite hard work and not quite as glamorous as it looks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, loads of like sleeping on people's couches and, you know, getting up at 3 a.m. to go to a Louis Vuitton show. Yeah, yeah so I, I did that for a few years. Um, and then I kind of started working with Sam McKnight on, as part of his show team. Um, and I feel like I really clicked there and I found my place there. So, wow. yeah. You were with him for three years? Uh, so I worked with Sam for in total for day. about six years, six but years. then about four years ago, the opportunity came up to, um, he was looking for a new first assistant. Okay. Um, so I was put forward for the job and I worked with him for full time for three years as his first assistant. Wow, that's, uh, that's yeah. in, uh, incredible. That's incredible to have that under your belt as well. Yeah, I mean, he's he, one of the greatest hairstylists in the world, so totally, yeah. <laughs> session hairstylist, so um, yeah. Awesome. I'm sure you learned loads there. I, I learned loads. Um, it, it was a bit of a whirlwind. We were working a lot. We were working every day. His schedule is crazy. He works like with all the top brands in the world, mm -hmm. top campaigns, photographers, stylists. So we're traveling a lot. So I did three years of, yeah, really hardcore traveling. Can I just understand this for one moment there? Because surely you can't schedule, uh, you know, six months in, a, in ahead of yourself because it's like, no. I go away on holiday <laughs> and I do yeah, something. Forget about it. Like, yeah, you've got to be yeah. available, don't you, when jobs yeah. come up? And especially when you're working in that position, you have to essentially be on call. Um, so it's a bit of a sacrifice. You know, you have to sacrifice certain things, maybe having a relationship or, you know, seeing your friends for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but when an opportunity like that and that big comes along, you have to just take it, you know. Yeah. It doesn't happen all the time. So 
that's what I did. Um, so I put everything on hold for three years, and I just kind of really focused on working just with Sam. It. Yeah. Crafted. Because it's, it's not just the show work, is it? There's a lot of prep that goes into that. So obviously being a uh, first assistant that way, you would uh, you'd have to be involved with like nighttime prep and before shows. And there's all that that people don't, I, I guess, know about, is there, isn't there really? Yeah, the, yeah. A huge amount of prep goes into like wig making. If there's like shows there's a lot of work involved. behind the scenes that people don't know about or forget about. But yeah. Um, we had a studio in West London and we'd, you know, there'd be nights we'd be there till 1, 2 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Especially with Fashion Week coming up or if we had a big show with a lot of wigs, we might be making wigs or colouring hair or yeah. colouring extensions, yeah. My God, it's a huge amount of work, isn't it? And then obviously the shows start early or whatever like that, you've got to get up early, so very minimal amount of sleep, I guess, yep. that's involved. Um, look, uh, I, can you tell us, uh, or could you give us some advice actually for somebody who wanted to get into this type of career? Um, so if you're interested in doing session work, I would advise people to first of all do your research, find out, you know, who's, read magazines, read the credits, find out who's styling the girls, who's doing the hair, who's doing the makeup. And then I would approach agencies and just say, you know, you're interested in assisting these artists and give them your availability. Um, and then, yeah, I would probably, also I'd, I'd, I'd probably advise you to, like I said, go part-time because you kind of have to be available. Okay. You know, if a lot of time everything is very last minute and you could get a call at 10 p.m. at night saying, are you available tomorrow morning at 6 a.m.? Okay. So you have to kind of just drop everything in and go. Okay, okay very good. Good. Um, I just wanted to, um, you mentioned about uh, uh, Sam McKnight there, when he did his book launch, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't not know a hairdresser that didn't go to it. I mean, it was amazing, actually, the presentation that he did in London mm -hmm. um, with his book launch. But I always remember your, your credit at the end of the book. I have the book. I'm sure many salons do have the book. You know, it was a nice little credit for you at the end there as well. So, uh, you know, my hat's off to you as well, because it's somebody that, I, like I said, I've followed and I've, I've known your career for some time. So I've got to say, you know, well done there. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. Um, listen, what is next for Declan? Um, so I have just kind of started out doing my own shows now at London Fashion Week. Um, so I'm represented by Premier Hair and Makeup, which is also which is an exceptional. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, with, it's one, one of the, the top agencies in London. Um, and I've been really fortunate to be really busy since I've been uh, signed with them. So yeah, I kind of just want to start doing my own shows now. Um, and I did last September, this September, where are we now? I don't know. <laughs> um, I did a presentation for Mother of Pearl, okay. which was their autumn winter 2018 uh, presentation at London Fashion Week. Which is amazing to, to have. This is what you're going to be doing today, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so some of the key looks that you did for the Mother of Pearl. Yeah, so I was the lead artist on um, that presentation, so I'm going to be recreating the look of the show okay, today. Wow. And there's like two looks within that look, isn't there? Yeah, um, so we had about 12 girls. Um, some of the girls had um, their hair up. So what I'm going to be doing is creating the look of the show and then also show you how um, to put the hair up. Okay, very good indeed. Um, tell us a little bit about the salon that you're, you, you, okay. you're working with. Um, so also this year I've got involved, um, I've gone into uh, a salon in Chelsea in West London as the creative director there. Um, it used to be the old Real Hair Salon, um, Josh Wood was part of it and I had the opportunity to come on board with it. So um, I've been doing that also on the side and th this summer we rebranded, it's called Chelsea Green Salon. Um, so Good yeah. Day. I mean, that's what it says in the tin. Yeah. <laughs> so in Chelsea Green, there's a salon. Um, so I'm not there that much, to be honest. Um, I kind of inherited a little team, and they're all amazing. We have some amazing ambassadors for Schwarzkopf, for Indola in there. Um, so there's a great team in there already, um, and I kind of want to build on that. So because I've been so busy traveling and doing my session work, I haven't been in the salon that much, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of overseeing the direction of it and the branding and the team that are there. Very good indeed. Do you know what? I can't wait anyway. I'm super excited for this class. We've been talking for some time about getting you over, and now it is, um, it's going to be upon us right, right now um, at 11.30. So um, if you guys don't have a ticket, you can go and uh, get your ticket. Go to hairdressinglive.com and buy your place for Declan's class today. 
thank you very much for joining us, Great. Declan. Thank you for having me. And thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you. If you like what you've seen, leave a comment below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.